Jeremiah chapter 4, beginning from verse 5 onwards to chapter 6, till the end of chapter 6. So, four, five, six, three chapters of Jeremiah. It's not, it's without a good commentary it will be kind of it will, it will be impossible to understand it because here is a section packed with with information albeit it's not see the problem with jeremiah as with isaiah it's not in chronological order in the sense that oh today i do what tomorrow and and it flows today this is my sermon today tomorrow and so on especially for chapters four five and six that little excerpts of lessons in between. You know, he he taught you know, this is my sermon here today, maybe a few weeks later, this is it, this is it, and it's a collection. So the flow is not there. And one really have to drill down to to take up the major parts and then connect it in, in the various parts of four, five, and six. So it could be divided into chapter five focuses on the moral decay of the people and the scandalous complacency of the religious leaders. Chapter 6 returns to the horror of the coming siege, but concentrates on God's analysis of the stubbornness of his people and the moral necessity of judgment. So the rest of, oh, that's 5 and 6. 4, the rest of chapter 4, we've done the first part of chapter 4 in the previous posting. It's mostly about the graphic portrayal of horrors and destruction of invasion, siege, and conquest. It, it's this is real life as it happens. It does not whitewash, you know, does not whitewash what's to come down down the pike, so to speak. If you do not repent, see the thing is for sure. I am. Chapter 4 of the 6 said, I will bring evil from the north and a great destruction. Remember when Jer in previous chapter, Jeremiah was asked, what do you see? I see a boiling pot about to tip over from the north. See, that's it. See, the pot has been boiling. The, you know, the, at this moment, they have none. God hasn't identified who that, you know, who the pot is what the enemy is, but we know later on is Babylon from the north. So Babylon is east of Jerusalem, but to come down to Jerusalem, you have to cross east, go up north a little, and then come down from the north to Jerusalem. So that's why it says the, the north, the I, God said, I will bring him, see? But Jeremiah warns them, you know, it's not Jer not just Jeremiah, I understand that. Jeremiah's words is God's word. God said, I put my words in your mouth, so the words you speak is my word. So it's as good as God's word when Jeremiah speaks, or sometimes he says, God says, God says. So, and what is, so if that comes, what is the action to repel this? You know, hide, build up defenses? No. It's as simple as repentance. Imagine, it's as simple as repentance to avert this disaster. Isaiah lived 150 years before the exile. So when he speaks to the exile, to the about the exile and to the exilees, he wasn't really going through it. So his message is kind of tempered. It's a vision God gave him. So he spoke to them and wrote it down so that when it actually happens when they went into exile, they have Isaiah's book to read. And Jeremiah lived a few decades before the exile, through the exile. So he knew. So the, his message is more, more imminent. It's like, it's coming. It's coming. It's sooner than you think. It's coming. But there's still time to avert this disaster. There's still time. Come on, people. Come on. But to no avail. So in the end, Jeremiah has to say, it's too late. Just take it. Just go into exile. It's like, whoa, what, what treachery to just not resist the enemy and go into exile. So, so his message, we have to look at it that way. It's like, that's why he's doom and gloom, the weeping prophet, because he, he lives 
his the first early part of his ministry was very close to the incident that at the time it could be averted if only you repent and in verse 6 we know that he lived through three kings Josiah the good king Jehoiakim the bad king and Zadokiah the king during the exile bad but he was the puppet put in by Nebuchadnezzar so Josiah started reforms, and we know, we know very well, it's a well-known fact that Josiah was cleaning the temple. We got to do something. Yeah, he tried to do reforms, clean the temple. And while cleaning the temple, they found a book. You know, they suspected that it was the book of Deuteronomy. But some say it's the Torah, but really it's the book of Deuteronomy. But no matter, what is Deuteronomy? See, Deuteronomy is the law given a second time. The law was given the Exodus while they were going through the desert. But because of their apostasy, they had to turn around and around and around and around for 40 years until that generation died off. Now, at the cusp of entering the, the promised land a second time, the law is given. This Deuteronomy is given again. So it's a repetition of Exodus, really. So if you have Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy, you have you know, as good a, a thing as the previous books, but they had it, I'm sure. And, and in chapter 6, verse 16, it says, Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see, and ask for the old paths where the, is the good way, and walk therein, and you shall find rest for your soul. But they said, we will not walk therein. See, it's like you knew, you knew the old ways because you just found the book of Deuteronomy. Just read it and follow it. Josiah read it and wept and said, we have failed God. We have not walked in this ways that have been set down by God. So he instituted reforms to, to help bring them back to the way of the Lord, the old ways. See, so it's, there's no, you know, it's not like they did not know. They knew. So, Throughout, you know, when they were indicted, it's like, you know, you've been warned, you know, time and time again. But you see what happens? Two things is very eminent. It's very apparent here. First, God will bring, it is God that brings disaster on them. It is God that brought Nebuchadnezzar, see, to take them into exile. It is God's doing. And the other thing is, Why? Is Israel's denial of God and refusal to be obedient. See, here we see we see it clearly. It's like it's not like you're ignorant. You're not. Here it's the book. Read it. But they say we will not walk therein. So even in today's world, we we see that you know people. It is. <laughs> There's no mystery about the Christian faith. There's no mystery about the Word of God. If you don't not understand, there are many, many commentaries. There are simple ones, um, more difficult ones, and very intellectual, spiritual ones. Yeah, we run the gamut. So the, there is really no, no excuse that I don't know, you didn't tell me. But here it clearly says, we will not follow. So that's, that's why destruction comes. See, first, first one, it, again, it does not whitewash what's coming down. It will tell you what will happen when they come, when the enemy comes, and why they come. So I will bring them because you refuse. You say, I will not. Listen, so I'm bringing disaster from the north such that the devastation will be the work of the fierce anger of the Lord. And what is arousing God's anger? Verses 17 and 18 explain, really, the evil Judah will reap is the evil she has sown. This is your punishment for for disobedience 
So here we read in 17 and 18. Because she hath be been rebellious against me, saith the Lord, thy way and thy doings have procured these things upon thee. This is thy wickedness because it is bitter, because it reacheth into thine heart. So here it's, it's deeply seated in Israel. There, and, and then what happens to the destruction? Understand that <laughs> it's not like modern warfare where the troops bring their, their rations so they eat what they brought and things like that. In those days, they just march in and they just devastate the lands, they like scorch earth, but scorch earth. That means not a blade of grass, not a tree, nothing stands. They don't bring food or water or whatever. So they come and pillage, they come and rape, they eat your food, they they, they cut down every tree for, for fuel, for whatever. They eat everything that you have. So this is this is how it's wartime is like. So it's so they're warned what happens when they when God brings the enemy. And in chapter four, twenty-three to twenty-six onwards, it it tells you what will happen. I beheld the earth, it was without form and voice. Like where, where have we heard that at creation? When the earth was without for, without form and was void. And here it's becoming again. That was creation where God was trying to, to bring beautiful things out of it. But here it's reaching, returning these beautiful things into that form void. It is uncreation. I beheld the mountains and lo, they trembled. And all the hills moved lightly. And I beheld and lo, there was no man. And all the birds of the heavens were fled. I beheld and lo, the fruitful place was a wilderness, and all the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord by his fierce anger. It minces no words. This is what you can expect. And what do you do? Build sea shrimps? No. Return to the old ways, the ancient ways. Walk in them. Repent. And then this disaster will be averted. And this is quite a long chapter, it's full of details, so I will do a second part of it.